Hello everyone. Today we are going to start a new chapter, Design of Gantry Gutter. We have sub subdivided this chapter into some parts because of the length of this one. So, so that we can take minute look in each, each and every part of the design. Firstly, we are going to the introduction part. So, first of all, we will discuss on what is Gantry Gutter. So, Gantry Gutter is a part or a crane uh, we have to provide actually to pass on the loads within a factory fl floor or a shop floor from one side to another but we cannot give the conventional we cannot give the entry of a conventional crane within the shop floor because there is no such provision and there may be congestion so we have to provide a over a over a traveling crane crane unit within this zone that is we have to provide the cranes that, that travels in overhead and which is provided with some pulley system which pull off the loads from one place to another so let us see the general arrangement so that we can take a good look on it so you can see here a general arrangement of a gantry girder wherein we can see this is the crane gutter this is overhead crane system this is the crane gutter and uh, here the crane there the crane unit is provided with two crane gutters and which is supported over the gantry gutters say this one is the gantry gutter which is provided with a rail above it and it rests with a, with a wheel over the gantry gutter this one this crane gutter the crane unit over the crane unit uh, we can see this one this uh, is the actual this span is the crane span and this is the gantry span we can see here the columns which are provided here is a stepped column where there is a portion which is a bigger one a thick one which is supporting the gantry gutter and it is known as crane leg the top one upper portion of the um, column is known as the roof leg uh, now you can see there is a unit above this is uh, the crab unit. We can say this one as a crab unit or trolley unit. Uh, this uh, upper portion which actually provided with some uh, hooks which actually supports the which actually supports, supports the uh, loading system. So in this portion we may see here in the next slide say this is the two di two dimensional view here this dimension is very important this is known as minimum approach distance or hook approach distance it cannot be it, the crab unit or the trolley unit having a movement uh, in horizontal direction in this direction this is the movement direction of the uh, crab unit or trolley unit it cannot approach beyond this one because otherwise the, the otherwise the load may hit on the column and may cause a problem this is the gantry gutter which we are to be we are going to design and which is provided with some rail here we can see here the rail which is supported uh, supporting the crane uh, gan, uh, crane gutter uh, which is provided with some wheels wheels here you see and this is the gantry gutter this one is the gantry gutter so we will go to the next slide we will see that there are different types of gantry gutter it may be a simple universal beam section or built up section or plate gutter like uh, system or you may say that it is provided with some wide channel there is a specific purpose on it we are coming on this in later so there, there are specific reason beyond this sometimes it is provided with some walkway this walkway is supported by this additional beam so it it is used as for maintenance purpose now we can see there are many types of arrangement that can be made to support the gantry gutter. There may be a stepped, stepped column as we have seen in the general arrangement picture. He, this, is, this portion is known as crane leg and this portion as roof leg or it, it may be provided with some bracket as it is shown in the two dimensional figure or may, may be provided with some extension hanger. So it is seen that we have to provide uh, this 
to support the gantry gutter which is subjected to vertical and horizontal load due to the dead loads and the live loads and uh, due to the movement of the crab unit and the trolley unit there may be a uh, impact in the garter which have to be considered here in we will see that generally the gantry gutter is considered to be designed as a laterally unsupported beam so for that purpose we generally used to provide a wider top flange compression flange is provided wider wider than the bottom flange because of the compression flange flange may fail due to instability or buckling uh, in this case so let us come to the next slide these are the different types of rails that may be provided this is the most heaviest rail that we can provide this is the common rail general standard rail and there this is some light rails for light weighted gantry gutter so we do not use to weigh the gantry gutter a rail of the gantry gutter because we have to make further maintenance due to time due to time to uh, due time to time and we have to maintain the gauge also sometimes it is also creating some stress due to thermal expansion so we have to pro we have to fix the rail providing clips or clips as it, it is shown here you can see the clips how it is fixed in the gantry gutter so thus it is fixed up but not provided with a rigid welding the wheel base distance this is also very important uh, terminology which is to be designed which is to be discussed in this case you will see here that uh, this is the picture that we have sh shown in the very beginning the crane gutter which is provided here it should not go beyond this this is known as the minimum hook approach distance this is specific for a specific type of crane and you will see if it if you take a section and see it from this side in this way in this way you will see that the over the gantry gutter the crane gutter which is provided with two axles are moving this and this uh, distance between two axles are known as wheel base distance which is specific for a specific type of crane and is to be provided by the vendor now the crane is uh, some relevant data to be provided by the vendor which we which was we are talking about which we are talking uh, in just be, uh, in the previous slide so what are those data what are those data number is number one is crane capacity that is uh, generally specified by the user and is accordingly supplied by the vendor of the crane so the crane span what should be the crane span if the capacity is such say x y what should be the span that is to be maintained weight of the crane that is the dead load of the crane the end carriage or the minimum uh, wheel base distance the maximum hook approach distance beyond which it, the trolley cannot move the alliance of the impact is very important because when while moving with a heavy load a uh, hammering effect due to the vibration shock from slipping of the slipping and sliding and the kinetic action due to the uh, acceleration and retardation of and the impact of the wheel wheel load may cause a dynamic effect this is to be considered while design rail are to be provided in the gantry gutter but it does not give any assistance it is no assistance to the gantry gutter it's to be taken into account now the forces falling forces may be considered the vertical load transmitted by the crane the lateral load transmitted due to the sudden stopping and starting of the crab or trolley unit the longitudinal force transmitted due to the sudden stopping and starting of the cranes may be considered this is a scheme where we can see the self weight of the crane gutter and the self weight of the trolley unit along with the hook load is to be transferred it, it causes maximum reaction when it is in minimum approach distance hook distance and this reaction is transferred to the gantry gutter along with the other wheel loads the self weight of the gantry gutter is to be also be considered there may be surge cause of surge horizontal surge due to the movement of the trolley and sudden braking and starting and also a surge due to braking and starting accelerating of the 
crane gutter along in the gantry beam or the gutter so this is to be considered what are the design steps so if i come up the design steps first of all approximate assumption of the section has to be done in step one then we have to determine the maximum wheel load which is to be designed for the maximum shear force here and the maximum bending moment to get the absolute maximum bending moment the wheel load should be placed such that the cg of the wheel this wheel load system and the cg of uh, and the uh, and the chosen wheel which may cause the maximum bending moment at the center will be placed such that it should remain at the equidistance with the cg of the beam we will discuss it in detail while discussing in the subsequent uh, lectures of the design so step 3 the section of the gantry girder uh, to be chosen selected and the properties will be calculated the calculation of the property of the section which has been selected then we will go for the check for shear considering shear buckling then for the considering of the bending moment causing local buckling for deflection and providing proper detail so we have come to the more or less at the end of this lecture if you see what should be the load combination there should be a two different live load one is accompanying and one is leading what should be the leading load it should be it should be provided with 1.5 in case of this combination and 1.2 in this scale combination and along among the wheel load which is the higher one is known as the leading wheel load in this case crane load will be the leading load so if i sum up the highlighting point of this introducting lecture will be it should be it, this is provided in workshop for carrying loads and the moving crane provided with wheel is provided fixed up in the over the rail uh, at the top of the gantry girder it may cause lateral it, it, it is it, it is considered as laterally unsupported beam so top flange is more strengthened the rail is provided over the gantry which provides no support to the gantry girder lateral force transmitted due to the sudden stopping and starting should be considered and the crane load are to be considered as live load or leading live load so with this we may conclude for the subsequent slide please sub subscribe my channel to get the other lectures and we have provided any uh, more other uh, design procedure of different uh, structural component of steel design in this channel with this hope we are concluding today thank you